I love dancing. I remember my parents first enrolled me into a ballet academy when I was about three years old, and I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. My first uniform was this full-on pink outfit, and it was like a pink leotard, a pink skirt, pink socks, and pink shoes. And I thought that I was on my way to becoming a real dancer. I remember I would always be so excited for every single class that I would be running into the studio. And there would also be the older girls that I looked up to who were in the higher levels, and they had you know, different leotards. And at the time, the people who had the highest levels, they had the black leotards. And they also had the point shoes where you go up on your toes with. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to be there one day. But then years passed, and I started to lose sight of what it really meant to me. I started to lose interest in dancing. And I started to think of it not as a passion, but more of like a lesson that I had to go to. It was like something that I was obligated to do because my parents paid for the classes. I started thinking, this is too much for me. It's too much of a hassle for me to put on the uniform, put my hair up in a bun, or even go to the academy. And I was just getting tired. After about seven years of ballet, um, I continued anyway. After about seven years, I started to gain interest in learning a new kind of dance. And it was the complete opposite of what I had been learning my entire life. I joined a dance group in my church and we danced like hip hop or modern dance. And obviously it's very, very different. But I really enjoyed it. I would even add in some of my ballet choreographies into the performances when I could. But that moment right there was where my love for the art grew. The more I learned about dancing, the more I started to realize how much I genuinely loved dancing and how much I enjoyed it, even if it was just a hobby. As a hobby, it sort of became a huge stress relief for me because uh, while I was dancing, I would always be just so focused on the dance, I wouldn't be able to think about anything else, even if it bothered me a lot. So it really helped when I was um, you know, in trouble or under a lot of stress, because I would be too focused in it to think about anything else. But then I had to stop. I needed to take a break for a while. About two years ago, I was in dance class, and um, I was just doing the routine. I was you know, doing the spins, doing the jumps, and there was this one jump where I had to have like, one leg up behind me, and when I landed, I felt this sharp pain in my lower back. And at first, I just brushed it off. I thought it was nothing much, so I just continued. But then it didn't get any better, and I realized that I had actually injured my back, but it wasn't anything major. Um, I started thinking to myself, I just, let's just take a break from dancing for a while. It's okay. But because I stopped, I started getting drowned in negative thoughts because I was thinking, I can't do it anymore. I can't improve and I can't dance the way I used to. And I was just really, really sad about it for months. And it was just a constant cycle of, you know, thinking, and regretting that I didn't take initiative to you know, get myself better quicker or you know, work on a better technique so I didn't get injured in the first place. But then at one point, I came to a realization that there was something that I actually gained from the injury. Time. Because I had more free time, I was able to reevaluate myself and I started to look at the better side of things. Now I had more time to rest, I had more time for my studies, and I had more time for my other hobbies as well. And aside from that, I also had time to reevaluate myself and look at the big picture of where I was. Um, while I was recovering, I would watch some old videos of myself when I was dancing, because with the dance group, we would be recording our routines every week so that when we come home, we can revise them and we'll still remember them the next week. And 
while I was watching, I realized that I would be able to point out the mistakes that I made because instead of actually doing the dance, I was watching it and then that's where I realized, okay, I'm not uh, giving enough energy in this area or I'm not moving my arms correctly. And I was also comparing myself to some of my inspirations online. And it's not good, I know it's not good, but it's, it was a good motivation for me. It's like when you have a quiz in school and you get it back and it's a bad result. You start panicking, you start thinking, oh my gosh, my parents are gonna kill me, <laughs> um, I'm gonna have a bad report card, what am I gonna do? But then, because those mistakes have been pointed out, now you know what it is that you're lacking in. You can ask your teacher what it is that you need to improve on, and they will specifically give you the answer. So you won't need to stress about you know, the entire thing. And when similar questions come up in the next test or the next exam, you'll be able to remember the mistakes you did before, and you'll be able to remember, okay, I shouldn't be doing this, I should be doing that. It's very easy to fall into negative thoughts, believe me. And to sort of pick yourself up and look at the better side of things is much harder. But when you're actually there, it will make a huge difference in your life. If you just took the time to take a step back, take a deep breath, and look, you'll realize that there are so much more things that you can you know, do with uh, your life. So if I were to leave you with one message, it would be this. Nothing in your life is 100% negative. Obviously, there would be some times where it seems like it is, but you really need to take the time to think about it and look at the other side of things. Thank you. Follow me, follow me, girl, be yourself. 